it seems like we're in this era of like everything's a referendum on toughness. Like Ryan did in the whole tether rule thing. People talking about DQ last week. Well, why do you think there's so much chatter about how tough or not tough people are? Uh, I don't know. It's a tough question. Probably part because we're a soft society as a whole. I don't know. Um, you know, my, it's my personal opinion, and I don't want to get into a bunch of personal opinions here, but just, you know, toughness is a question that always comes up in in, uh, in football. You know, it's a collision sport. It's one of the few that, you know, you physically can put your hands on somebody else, and it's 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 cheered, and it's, uh, you know, it's uh, celebrated. So um, it's definitely an element to it, you know, define what physical toughness is and mental toughness and em emotional stability that, that, it, that is required to play our game. I think there's a lot of things that go involved in that. Um, it's rare to find guys that consistently can line up and play and function at the at, as the moment heightens and this, the sense of urgency starts to happen. Very few uh, does their heart rate go down and, and they, they have a calm in the chaos, so to speak. And uh, we have a few guys on our team like that. And some guys stepped up in, in big moments. So you know, they may not be bone crushing hits that, um, you know, uh, get clicks and likes, but they're, they're tough moments and, and uh, they're, they're certainly clear pictures of what toughness looks like in tough and critical moments. I mean, DQ obviously that Buffalo hit last year was you know, huge set and gets hurt two weeks ago, comes back and plays the way he did. How do you think he's responded to those types of collisions? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we – we err so much on the, the side of player safety, you know, and you have to in today's game. And, um, you know, we, nobody comes to watch me coach. Nobody comes to watch, you know, contrary to everybody's belief, the things that go along with football, like they come to watch the players play. Um, so we got to keep the players healthy and we got to keep, um, you know, these guys going in the right direction. So, yeah, I mean, there's always, I think, probably a little extra emphasis on, you know, are you sure you're okay type of thing, um, you know, from the medical staff, from the training staff. And, uh, you know, what the, once these guys have the exact facts on what it is and what their injury is and, you know, the best plan of attack and when they're able to come back and what they're able to play through and what not to play through, that we make the best decision for, for what it is moving forward. So um, guys can get back out there and play confident. And if, you, if you're a football player and you go out there and you don't have any confidence in what you're doing, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. So, um, you know, I'd say in each guy's case to come back and to play well, they, they were confident when they were, able to, when they were able to do it to go out there. Uh, preparation, you know, you know, he's, he's like one of the few guys that comes in here every week and watches individual film with me. And that's not by me chasing him around. That's him asking every Wednesday if he can come in here and steal an hour of my time to sit there and with him and, and go through what it looks like. And, um, you know, that's not, that's a small sample size of what it is. I mean, there's multiple times throughout the summer where I can hear that jugs machine going from my office and I walk, look out the window and it's him and somebody else. And that's led by him. That's not, you know, that's not a coach telling him to do that. That's just, I think, who he is as a player and, and who he is really as a human being. I mean, uh, that guy's got a lot of responsibilities on his plate that he handles at a high level. And I think what he does away from the field translates to what it, you know, what it should look like on the field. Um, and he's, a, he's not a raw, raw, beat your chest leader type of guy that, that way that's going to, you know, draw a camera to himself all the time. He's a guy that's just going to work really, really hard. He's going to say stuff when it, when it matters. And he's got enough uh, stuff to him that, you know, when he says something to another player, they respect it because they know how much time and energy that he puts into it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we've been in four or five of those opportunities to win the game when the defense has been on the field in the last three or four years, and, and, and we haven't done it. You know, we did it on Saturday. So it uh, should be a major confidence boost for those guys that, uh, you, know, um, you know, to get it done. You know, I think offensively it's, you know, it's a – it's a it's a situation where we got to fix and we got to take the air out of the ball and not put the situation not put it on the defense to do that, um, you know. And then there's a couple of things in the kicking game in the second half that I thought we were just okay at. Others I thought we were really good at. You know, we returned a couple of kickoffs to the 50 yard line in the, in the second half of that game, and um, you know, those are major field position boosts and momentum boosts uh, if you're able to capitalize and get points. Um, you know, but. Uh, 
I think it's just the resolve continues to show up of our team and the, the resiliency of our team and the, the connectedness of our guys. You know, they, they do a good job communicating in tough moments. They do a good job trusting one another that they're going to make a play. Um, and I think the thing I appreciate the most is there's not a bunch of childish reactions to mistakes. It's a, hey, we got to go over and fix this and we got to talk to each other. And, and we don't have a, we have a very limited amount of time to do so. So we got to handle this the right way and uh, get back out there because we're going to have another opportunity to go win the game. And, and, and to go do it is, is uh, that says a lot about our team. You mentioned the return of Max and the talent aside. What, is, what does just his presence back in the lineup do for the team? Well, I mean, I think very similar to what I said about Jerwan. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, presence of you know uh, good play but it's also a, pr a presence of consistency um, a presence of a communication that's a that's a bonus out there and you know he's a, one of the guys that makes the other guys around him better and just by his him being out there and being present so um, you know I think you really find out a lot about guys when they're hurt and when they're injured you know I, I'm glad to see him back out there because I'm tired of watching him walk around and dance around behind me on the sidelines because he's as nervous as the coaches are during the game so um, yeah, he wants to be out there. He's chomping at the bit to be there, and he prepares each week like he's going to be the starter even when he wasn't playing. So it's good to see him out there playing and off the sidelines following me around. Right. So. Uh, oh, go ahead, Kyle. No, you're good. Oh. Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, heading to UMass, first trip away from home in a month. You know, how do you avoid the letdown of going out of conference play and then coming back into conference play? Like, what challenges does going to UMass present? Yep. I mean, I think that all these games count as one. And, uh, you know, again, people outside the walls of this building don't think that's true. I mean, you just, you're just you supposed to just show up and everybody's supposed to lay down for you. I get it. Um, but they have scholarships, too. Uh, they have great coaches, too. Um, and that they, they're going to prepare to play us and just like we're going to prepare to play them. So you... You have to take each game the same, approach it the same from a standpoint of what your week looks like. I still believe there's a lot of things here internally that we have to handle. Um, you know, in college football, this is true, regardless of if you play Ohio State, Notre Dame, Illinois, whoever, uh, Texas Southern, doesn't matter. Somebody that you're playing against uh, this week could be the best player you played against the entire season. And, uh, you know, the naked eye doesn't see that sometimes. The outside fan doesn't see that sometimes. But our guys do, you know, and there's a lot of good football players on this football team. This quarterback's a dynamic threat. He can beat you with his legs. He can throw it over your head if you're not careful. Um, you know, there's good skill players, you know, and the defense. There's a really good defensive tackle. There's a really good corner. There's a really good safety. They're sound at the second level. There's a ton of starts on defense. And they blitz ev from everywhere every third play. So uh, we have plenty of challenges to avoid a letdown. So we have to have a great week of practice, and we have to do a really good job starting with tomorrow morning getting a jump on, on, on a good practice week. What um, Team-wise, offensively, you're, you're high in the national rankings. You have individuals that are high in a lot of stats. Like, what piece of the offense is most positive to you or most sustainable throughout the season? Well, we've had great, great consistency from the offensive line. You know, um, I think we're, you know, I think number one in the country in fewest sacks um, allowed, and one of them was an intentional grounding that uh, that it's obviously on the quarterback. So, you know, they they've done a good job uh, communicating. Uh, the quarterback is, you know, him. Both quarterbacks that have played are they're hard to sack because uh, they can escape and get away with their with their legs. Um, you know, and I think they've done a good job playing within the system and, you know, getting the ball out of their hand in, hand in a timely fashion. When it requires to check it down to the back, they check it down. So I think that part of it, um, we've been able to play with, with good pace and tempo. Um, kind of keeps the defense off balance at times, I think. Um, but I think I'd point to the offensive line and everything goes off of that because if you're able to run the ball effectively, then it sets the table for everything else. And then Judge Culpepper's in his fifth, maybe even sixth year of college football. Um, he's up there high in sacks in the country. How nice is it to see like a veteran guy like that um, who maybe hasn't you know, gotten the stats that in the last few years that, that he wanted to kind of be and you know, elevate his game and be a big force on the defense? Well, I mean, I think it just, it just confirms that, that, that karma is a real thing. You just keep adding value and continuing to do the right thing over and over and over and over again. Like what is, what is, what you want to come to you is going to come to you. And, um, you know, some guys, they don't, they don't get to that point in time because when it starts to get hard and there's not an instant reward for them, they fade and they fold and they, 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 they stop working uh, and they eliminate themselves. And you can ask any of these guys, ask them to do one thing, you know, in preseason camp and it was not to eliminate yourself, you know, and to continue to stay the course because you can't, there's so many variables in college football that you can't handle. You don't know when guys are going to get hurt. You don't know, 
when adversity is going to come for whatever person or whatever player. Uh, and you have to have as many guys ready to, as possible to play and go in and play uh, efficient ball because, you know, because uh, if you don't, it'll cost you. And it'll cost you a game. And a game can cost you a season in, in the world we're living in today. So um, to see guys like him continually put in the work, continue to do the right thing, continuing to buy into really, really good days and, and trust that the process is going to repay them and to have it repay them, you know, that's that's why you coach. I mean, that's that's fulfilling. It probably it's fulfilling for him, but that's more fulfilling for me than anything. Like, that's why you do this. I mean, that's what you you want to see people reach their full potential. And when guys do it, you know, that just that that makes you feel good about what you're doing. This might be a better question for a couple of weeks, but you're going to have three straight road games here. How much of a like mental, physical grind is that to go on the road, be at a hotel every Friday for three weeks, you know, bus rides? Play yeah. Rides. It's different, you know, obviously, and you know it's different. You wouldn't ask the question, but I think, like, to me, there's there's a little bit of, you know, hey, there's going to be 65 to 70 guys that are going to get on a, a bus, they're going to get on a plane, and they're going to go play in an environment that's it's just them, and it's just us. Like, there's nobody else. So uh, I kind of like that a little bit. I think that find you find out the character of your team a little bit through those moments too. Um, you know, you find out really like when you you take them in, out of their element and take them away, uh, how they're going to act when things get really really hard. You know, I don't I don't know what kind of crowd UMass will have on Saturday, and I don't really care. I you know I want to see our team leave our comfort zone, go outside of our comfort zone, and go play, and play it on a high level when it's just us being around each other. Now, I may feel differently after three straight weeks, but uh, that's what I'm looking forward to this week for sure. Consistent people that have consistent habits, you know, and you don't have a chance to play as a freshman if you don't. You 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 are the person that I just mentioned. You do eliminate yourself. You don't know you do, but you do. Um, a very strong character people have a really high uh, capacity for handling of the workload that's required from a college football standpoint. And, uh, you know, and they're good at their craft. You know, you could make, you know, you put Connor in there in third down situations. He's as good a pass protector as he is catching the ball in the backfield and running the ball. And he's well documented what he's able to do when he gets the ball in his hands. So you don't get to that point in time unless you're really smart. Um, you really take a, 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 a true authentic approach to the work required to do that. Um, you have some of the toughness characteristics that we just talked about. you got to be mentally tough. I mean, that's a pretty tough moment for Emilio to have to go out there and hit a punt. Uh, you know, put him down inside the 20-yard line at the end of the game there, because if not, you know, their field goal kicker just made a 50-yard field goal. So uh, we didn't have much field position to play with right there. So tough moment for him, and you know, he he hit a punt that you know allowed us to get some field position back. He didn't, you know, shank it into the front row of the crowd. So uh, I think it's a consistent approach to their work ethic. Really, really good people and um, guys that have a really high sense of what the details look like. I mean, putting Connor in that situation, obviously, I mean, that's a high-pressure, big moment. Is that just Zero hesitation. You had full trust in a true freshman being out there. Yes. Yeah. You know, he's since he's got here in January, he's been. You know, it, it is. That's what it's been. It's been total consistency, and uh, you know, and I think sometimes young players they they have a skewed opinion, and you're, you can talk to our guys. They have a skewed opinion on what it's going to be like when you get there. They care about things that don't matter. They care about what jersey number they're going to wear. They care about what cheerleader thinks they're cute. They care about uh, all the things that how many pictures they get to tick put on their Instagram. That they care about all the things that don't matter. Um, so for a young player to understand what's going to be required of him to be judged in the 12 opportunities a year that we're guaranteed, uh, and the work required that goes into that. So you have those moments. You play really, really well. Man, oh man, that's a that's a that's a tip of cap, a cap to that person, and, and probably you know understanding that that's a product of really good parenting by his, his family and the way he raised them.